Mr. In Huan Yu from Google will make presentation about AI-based watermarking technology for protection of copyrights. Hello everyone. My name is In Huan Yu. In Korean, 저는 유 In Huan이라고 합니다. Thanks for inviting me in ICO Tech 2023. I'm a senior software engineer in Google. In this talk, I will present AI-based 3D to 2D watermarking for copyright protection. This talk is based on our paper, Deep 3D to 2D Watermarking, accepted and presented in CBPR 2022. This presentation contains introduction, method, results, a short video demo, and conclusion. First, I will introduce our motivation, goals, and contribution. Generative AI is now everywhere. Recent Gen AI models are not only create texts and 2D images, but also it covers 3D da data generation. So there are many 3D diffusion models for generating 3D data. Creating 3D data such as 3D meshes, point cloud, 3D volume are now much easier than before. However, we still have a one problem. Protecting the 3D data is still not yet easy. There are several traditional 3D watermarking methods, but the traditional 3D watermarking method put watermark into the 3D mesh and retrieve the watermark from 3D data itself. Now, there is a big hole in here. Let's talk about a virtual but possible scenario. Assume that you are creating 3D data for your own uh, game development, for example. One day someone steals your 3D data and the thief start using it. In here, using means the other company start putting the, your 3D data into their, their game or their software and publishing it in, in to the users and users start using the data and then share their result. For example, in here, share their result is render the 3D data and then put it into the social media or, or as a v image form or capture a video and then putting in YouTube. You know, as a content creator, you know that it's your resource. However, it's not that easy to prove that it's yours because uh, because traditional 3D watermarking method cannot retrieve the messages watermark from rendered, rendered data. Based on this scenario, what we actually need in here is watermarking 3D data and then retrieving from rendered 2D images. So um, our goal in here is developing an AI method that can invisibly watermark on 3D data, then retrieve the watermark from rendered 2D images so that we can protect the 3D resource in rendered form. This is available recent because of the recent development on the differentiable rendering method. Uh, this allows us forward and backward propagation between 3D data and 2D rendered images. So our contribution in here is, this is the first 3D to 2D watermarking method, which can encode your a watermark into your 3D data and then decode it from rendered images. And the use of differentiable rendering make our method fully differentiable, so which enables to train the whole framework end to end with the different 3D di distortions. Last, our decoder can decode the me embedded message from non-differentiable renderers, and this can be improved, further improved by fine tuning. Now we will talk about our method. Our method has two inputs. One is mesh input, the other one is message input. Mesh contains uh, 3D information plus texture. 3D information are, consists of vertices and indices. This, uh, this two input goes into our encoder. 
encoder has uh, two different encoder in, inside. One is vertex encoder, and then the other one is a texture encoder. Vertex encoder embed messages into the vertices, and then texture encoder embed the same message into the texture. So after this, the encoder, we have a watermarked mesh. And then we apply the distortions on the top of it, because in real application, there is a possibility someone who steals your 3D data, they can modify a little bit. So to, to cover this possible scenario, we apply some additional distortions. For in here, we put noise, cropping, or some scaling, rotation, and the other uh, possible distortions in here. And then those distorted mesh goes to the differentiable renderer. The differentiable renderer, we accept two parameters. One is the camera parameter, and then the other one is the lighting parameters. The camera and lighting parameters are randomized to, in, during the training time, so to cover possible, many possible cases, the different type of our lighting rendering conditions, such as dark rendering, dark the lighting condition or bright lighting conditions, or camera can be wide FOB or like like less FLB in here. And then after that, we have a rendered images. The image is sent to the image decoder and the image decoder decode the message bit from these images. So during the training time, we have uh, two, made two major loss. One is the, the input mesh and the watermarked mesh should be similar. The second loss is the output messages and then input messages should be same. This is a two loss term we are using. For the architecture of the vertex encoder, we use the point net v1 and v2. And then to the texture encoder and then to the image decoder case, we use the hidden CNN based network architecture. For data set and experiment settings, we pre process the modern net 40 data set and made each mesh contains 5,000 vertices and 5,000 faces for training. However, we can accept any size mesh, mesh for the inference. Each vertex contains three positional elements, three normal elements, and two, position, two texture coordinates. Modern net 40 data set does not contain texture information, so we randomly allocate a texture for each mesh. During the training time, we use 128 by 128 resolution for the texture. And, fi and final rendered image has a 600 by 400 by 3 resolution. And we embedded randomly generated 1 to 48 bits for training. Now we are talking about the results. Uh, in this slide, we showing the 3D shape changes are not so much even by watermarking. In the left column, column A shows that the blue is mostly around maximum 2% of the vertex differences. And then it, the color theme goes to the red, then it goes to 10% changes. As we can see, most of the vertices has a blue, which is less than 2% of the vertex changes. We still can embed messages. And column B and C shows the rendered images of this mesh. And then you can see that the difference is not so much. Colum column D shows the difference map, which is actually four times magnified. As we can see, the difference is pretty minimum. More results about the rendered result is a column in this slide. Uh, column A is not watermarked and column B shows the watermark meshes and column C is at four times magnified the difference map. As we can see, the difference map is pretty small. And then next slide, it shows the bit accuracy versus number of bits. We tested the four, three possible cases. One is we put the messages to into the mesh vertex only, and then mesh texture only, and then mesh vertex plus texture encoder together. In column A, vertex only cases, when we put one bit for the watermarking, we can see the accuracy is around 85%, which is pretty low. 
because 0.50% uh, or 0.5 means it's a total random bit. So it's just slightly uh, better than the random. Uh, however, in column B, we can see that the texture encoder, when we're using one bit, it's nearly 99% accuracy. And then around 10 bits, it's still above 90% which is pretty good, we can mostly recover the, the bits. However, we can see the blue area in here means the standard deviation, and we can see the standard deviation is pretty large. However, if we combine the mesh vertex and texture encoder together, then the accuracy is nearly the same as column B. However, the standard deviation is much less than B, which is, uh, this is uh, much more stable for training. Last result shows the different type of renderer and user studies. In the left side of the slide shows the watermarked and not watermarked comparison with the non-differentiable renderers, especially ray tracers. We still can retrieve some bits of some bits even without fine tuning. However, after the fine tuning, we can recover the bits much better. Right side bottom, bottom right side of this slide shows the user study results. In the noise, noise texture case and ray tracing rendered image cases, user says 74% and 78% says that two images are same, which means watermarked and not watermarked messages are same. Um, this is pretty good because we are giving the two images side by side, which is pretty harsh condition. On the other hand, uh, if when we are using uh, real texture, only 49% people says that two images are same. Still, there is a half of the time we are succeeding. In now, we will show some short video demos. In this demo, top shows the not watermarked and bottom shows the watermarked video. As we can see, the number of bits changes over time. However, it's still above more, mostly one, which means we can perfectly decoding the messages. We are testing 8-bit embedding 8 bits and decoding the 8 bits. And then accuracy of this video is mostly one. And in here, the difference map, we can see that it is pretty small. And we also tested the non-watermarked and non-watermarked and watermarked with ray tracers. And ray tracing non-differentiable renderers still can decode messages. As a conclusion, we have some takeaway messages in here. So we studied in here the problem of the 3D to 2D watermarking for the first time, which is a key step for generalizing 3D watermarking usage. Our contribution includes the first end-to-end -end trainable model resist to various 3D distortions. We also analyzed the efficiency of the different architectures and explored the performance of our framework. We also have some possible future work or some weaknesses too. So our decoder needs to be retrained for significantly different type of rendering techniques, such as cartoon rendering. In here, we assume that mostly using uh, realistic rendering. Second, the robustness of the non-differentiable 3D distortions and making the decoder to be able to retrieve messages encoded by traditional encoder are worth to study. Thanks for listening to uh, this talk. And if you have any question, please send me an email or you can check our paper for more details. Thank you. Nick, please give him a big round of applause. He shared with us digital watermarking technologies used for protecting copyright. Thank you for the insightful presentation.